Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. Yes, so... Finally, everything is cleaned up around Duda. I finally took the last little bit of effort just to clean up everything, make sure everything looks good, and uh, really get everything all set up. So, our initial launch was nine separate rockets all heading to Duna. And with these nine rockets carried everything from the satellite systems that you see in orbit to the ground bases to the space station and the refueling depot. It took a long time and a lot of this stuff, a good portion of it ended up basically as waste and I tried to cut as much waste as I possibly could on all of these missions and right now our space station is in its mere infancy so please mind you it, it this is not the completed version of the space station this will have to be added on to at some point or another but we basically got a small, I, I call this like kind of a moving module for, you know, meeting up with parts and, you know, this has actually come in really big handy because a lot of things really needed all of that. And a lot of the RCS fuel out here, I've kind of actually figured out how important it is to store stuff away when you don't really have quick access to it when you're in orbit around Kerbin. So a lot of my RCS fuel did not go to waste. I saved a lot of that and I did use a lot of it. All the excess fuel from all of these missions was saved like as much as I possibly could. Uh, I know on a couple of my missions, I actually had to just basically destroy the landers and stuff like that. And a lot of my landers weren't uniform, or I should say the uh, transit stage that I had before the actual landing stage on a lot of my stuff wasn't uniform all around. So some of them were just completely unusable. They didn't have power producing modules on them or anything like that. So there was no way for them to get power once they were disconnected from a power source. So I'm going to start here and then we're going to jump to our next one which will be the Duna Fuel Depot so I'll see you in a second. And here's our Fuel Depot. It has come together pretty well. Each module, you guys can remember how each module was set up when they were sent here. Uh, this is probably six or seven different, several different rocket parts just all put together as far as different stuff and this is one of the major things that I knew I had to bring I just didn't know where I was going to pack it along which was this was uh, on the satellite launch as far as the satellite rocket that came here uh, this got taken off and brought here so we could take our excess tanks I would rather save the tank than to dump it but basically you can see we're just shy of like half of the fuel that we brought here and I meant with our launch to bring this much fuel so it wasn't like I overcompensated in the beginning I, I knew that we were going to have lots of fuel left over so I made sure that we had a way to store all the fuel so that was kind of the major thing with that and you can see most of these tanks themselves just uh, it's basically three parts it's two docking ports and the tank and that's it and I set that up because I knew that I would be moving these tanks around now there was one tank that was extra and I decided not to keep it because this tank and this tank and all of these tanks on the top here including the RCS is completely full on the bottom here though all of these tanks are empty along with uh, one RCS tank is basically completely empty and the other one is you know pretty much all the way there too but the rest of everything else is pretty much full except for the bottom half yeah that's just the way I, I kind of set it up and we got these guys here which I haven't really set them up or used them for much but these are kind of the same concept 
as the uh, big RCS tank we had on the station, which I'm considering switching them around, but I don't know. So anyways, I'll see you once we get to Ike Base Alpha. And here we have Ike Base Alpha. Now this one was a major pain in the butt. Uh, there was so many problems I had with this thing. But it, I, I just can't believe how well it came together. Uh, a lot of the stuff, you see the, this is uh, the sky crane I used. And you can see right here that we're not on a flat surface, which really does make a big difference when you're building a base just make sure you're really on a flat surface the other part here is kind of the leftovers of this i ended up landing basically a whole and and oh yeah and this guy over here too i ended up landing one of these and i and i have debris set to zero so basically everything got deleted except for certain parts so Whatever was basically connected up to a command module at that point got saved. So you can see, like, you know, there's certain things here and certain things aren't here. For those of you who are new, you probably won't really notice unless if you go back and watch the old videos. But, yeah, this is what Ike Base Alpha ended up turning into. It isn't my best base, but it is definitely a really awesome base considering it's on Ike. So... Now we will jump over to the Duna base. And now for the Duna base. Now this one, there was another few, there was a few problems with it. I really couldn't, there was really nothing else I could do about it. You can see that these parts are all kind of strewn about over here. I ended up landing this base just kind of in this general area. I'm not really going to go about exactly pinpoint landing but it's kind of just basically in this area uh, I ended up setting up these four together and then I decided to land the second portion which was still in orbit at that time and I ended up getting it about 500 meters off half a kilometer or so off from the target which you know not using any mods anything like that I, I thought that was a pretty freaking good landing as far as how far away I was now this one did have a lot of problems you can see that the the slope is a little bit um I would say it's about the same if not a little bit higher now the main problem with these bases are that if you can't land it on a place that's like pretty much flat using the sky crane is kind of a pain and it really doesn't work out that well i should also mention wow well, mention that the uh docking ports got broken up broken off of the bottom of these and that was just because the landing wasn't so it was so so and i didn't really get a very good landing with the uh, duna base so there was a lot of problems that i didn't for C until after I got here and I thought I was prepared because of all the testing from Kerbin. So apparently I've I've done, you know, a lot of stuff with this and I think my next one coming around I will definitely make some bigger changes and make sure that there's more than enough power and make sure all the engines are spaced out properly, but overall it's pretty freaking amazing. The, um, you know, basically, oh, we're a little bit still in time warp. There we go. So the, the satellite networks, I'm not really going to cover so much. Uh, I mean, you guys all pretty much know what a satellite, satellite network looks like. I don't really need to cover what the satellites look like or anything like that. Now this, I don't think I did anything with. There was a uh, little spare part left over I thought that got deleted but apparently it didn't so we'll go to the doing a refueler real quick so this is the refueler and I figured and I also thought that it would make more sense to actually put a refueler in orbit we would need one regardless and I don't want to use I want to have like a dedicated refueler as opposed to using a, this thing is spazzing out. <laughs> um, I want to have more of a dedicated refueler 
than using something that's like a spare stage that's left over or whatever it is that I had. Um, you know, I really wanted it to be really prepared as far as how much fuel it could carry as well as just the amount of power the engines could hold and having docking ports and everything else on it. Uh, you know, it has the big docking port, the small docking ports, the medium docking ports. It has every single docking port on it, I believe, when I set it up. I don't see the small docking port. I think I just put one on there. I don't know where it is. There might not even be one, but I just kind of wanted to make sure. And like you see, this module right here is just basically a converter from small to incredibly large. That... It was, it's just in case kind of stuff. You might need it, you might not, you never know. But the one thing that is different about this one, is just a little bit, is basically these fuel tanks on the outside are not connected to these main tanks, which even these have fuel in them, along with all of these. I mean, they're running a little bit low, but this right here, for instance, could get us easily all the way to the space station or wherever we needed to go in orbit around uh Duna. So it's it's been a pretty big trip, guys, and I can't believe how well everything has turned out. All the stuff that got put into this, it's been probably the biggest thing I've done all at once, and I kind of wanted to, I've been kind of just putting it off a little bit as far as like setting up everything and just getting all the parts together, and it, it's just been a really big 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 mission by far one of my biggest missions compared to the jewel explorers that i built in the past uh going to jewel uh it, it well actually taking the duna explorer to jewel um it, it's it's really been a really big trip and um, i'm glad that you guys i got some of your input during uh, the construction and the implementation and the setup and everything of this base and the whole Duna mission as, as far as everything that I've done. So I'm thinking we are going to have to start on the station here eventually and I'm going to start packing up for that eventually. I don't know when, but it should be pretty soon. But, uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like what you see here, subscribe. There's always more to come. To all you new people, welcome. And, uh, yeah, I will see you next time.